I would just look ridiculous in because I have a very tiny head. Like once I see something that I really like, I heavily fixate on it, which is like not healthy, but <laughs> it's fine, who cares? Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you guys are new here, I'm so happy that you're joining me for this video. We are doing another wish list kind of haul of ideas that I have jotted down over the past couple months because it's been a little bit since I've done my last video. Um, also, I should probably mention, obviously, the scenery is a little bit different than what I'm normally filming in my tiny New York City apartment. So I'm currently in Florida and I'm here until tomorrow, which is Monday. And I figured I would film this video down here just so you guys can get a little bit of a different scenery and I wanted to get this up earlier rather than later. So yeah, here we are. I actually might flip you guys around because the lighting is a little bit better this way and I don't know if you guys can see that well. Not that you have to really see me in order to hear me talking about random stuff, but um, yeah, I just wanted you guys to see the scenery and where we are right now. So I have you propped up on a chair that has like so many holes in it. So it took me like 10 minutes to do that. So I'm gonna flip you guys around the other way, which hopefully doesn't take another 10 minutes. Okay, I think that should be fine. Obviously you guys can tell. I mean, there's a reflection of a palm tree. I feel like that's good enough. <laughs> um, but so I'm just gonna go through on everything that I have been lusting after recently, just to give you guys some ideas and some inspo if you guys are looking to add anything into your wardrobe. I'm gonna just bring this down a little bit. Okay, so number one on the list is something that I've been talking about in my vlogs recently, and it's a pair of Veja V10s. I love those sneakers so much. I bring them everywhere, I wear them everywhere, and I need a new pair because the ones that I have are very beat up and I still wear them so much because they don't look beat up and I'm like the only person that would be able to tell that because I saw my sisters that were brand new and I was like, okay, mine need to be refreshed. So I might keep the old pair just as like a going out pair of shoes because they're leather and they're super easy to clean. But there's like spray paint on the thread from a fashion show that I assisted at and like they're just not where they need to be. So I want to get a brand new pair just also for the fact that I've had these shoes for like three years and I cannot even tell you how much I've worn them. Like normally any brand of shoe that I own, especially sneakers, would have like deteriorated by now for the amount that I wear these sneakers. I've walked so many like long distances in them because they're so comfortable and they're just like a really nice like more elevated sneaker. And anytime anyone asks me for suggestions for sneakers that like you can wear to work and you can also wear out, I always say Vejas because you can dress them like, I mean, you can't dress them totally up. I mean, I wear them out to like bars and stuff in the summertime, but they're just like a very versatile shoe and I've gotten my use out of them so, so much. So I don't feel bad buying another pair if I have to. And especially since like the price is a little bit higher, I think they're 150, but for the amount of use that I get out of them, the cost per wear is like, honestly, like, two cents at this point. So definitely looking to get a pair of those. I probably will get them off of Net-A-Porter because that's where I got my first pair. And they're just amazing. Like their customer service is perfection and their packaging is also really nice. So I like to have that like kind of experience as a consumer too. So that's probably where I'm going to buy them from. I know they sell them at like Nordstrom and stuff like that. And I have bought from there too. Um, but yeah, that's just my game plan. So you can tell how serious I am because I know exactly where I'm buying them from. And then the next thing, so, I mean, it's very on brand for this video, but I have been looking at the Abercrombie & Fitch website for their swimsuits specifically. I mean, they've like like elevated everything on their website, but their swim is actually so good. And I'm the type of person who used to shop for all of my swimwear at Victoria's Secret. And now that it's like not that great at Victoria's Secret, I hate to say it because they used to be like, I feel like they used to be everybody's go-to for swimwear because it wasn't too expensive and they had like fun patterns and everything and really cool like shapes and stuff. But now Abercrombie is my go-to. They have like really cute details. I saw a couple of silhouettes that I liked in the beginning of the season, but I didn't love the patterns. But now they have so many cute ones. I think as we're moving into summer, they're gonna bring out more and more. And I wanna get them while the stock is still high because it's like technically a little bit before the season of when everyone's gonna be wearing swimwear. But being down here, I'm definitely starting to think about it. So. Um, there are a couple of different styles. I'm going to insert photos of everything that I'm talking about on the screen so you guys can see and everything will be linked down below. Um, make sure you guys click the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed because I have so many really fun ideas planned for videos coming in the future. 
and of course vlogs thrown in the middle there. So if you guys enjoy that kind of content, then I definitely would subscribe. Um, but yeah, so then the next one we're going on to, I feel like some people are gonna be surprised and some people won't, but I am like dying to get the Anin Bang sport sweatshirt. And originally I wanted the gray set. So it's like a gray crew neck and matching gray joggers. And I think the top says Anin Bang sport and then the um, joggers just say like AB on them. And I've seen so many people like, layering it with coats in the winter time and now that it's a little bit warmer out you can wear it without a coat and I was just like I want it so bad but I have so many loungewear sets and so I figured I should probably just get something where it's just the top so it's the gray sweatshirt I think it's navy writing it's either navy or black but I've just been seeing it on all of my ads on Instagram too which is like super unhelpful I mean Instagram is sneaky they know exactly what they're doing and so I've just been seeing it everywhere and I just love the oversized fit they do like a really I mean, a Neen Bing is like a lot of classics. Like I have a tank top from them and I actually brought it with me. I wore it this morning to go get coffee. And it's just like, I know that the sweatshirt is $170, which is like kind of like, it's like kind of gross, but the quality of this stuff and the fact that it's a very sustainable brand, I feel a little bit better about investing in something like that because I don't, I don't know. I guess I don't feel bad. Like there's not as much of like a guilt factor involved as if I were to buy like a $70 blazer from Zara. I'm like, okay, $70 quality is probably not that great and they're not sustainable like whatsoever. So I feel like in this circumstance, I'm like just justifying this for myself. Um, but yeah, I love the quality of them. I love the brand itself and I just feel like they do everything so well. If anyone was gonna ask me like what brand aligns with your style the most, I would say Anina Bing, which is like kind of crazy because I feel like I never used to be able to answer that. but. She's doing it all right. And I'm definitely planning on getting that sweatshirt. I've been trying to find it secondhand because that's how I found my original one for $70. And it was like brand new, like with the tag on it still, but I haven't seen it anywhere. And I'm like, I understand because if I own that one, I would not give it up either. So yeah, I'm gonna keep looking. And then if I end up not being able to find it, I might just pull the trigger and get it. Okay, so then the next one is a little bit random, but kind of not at the same time. I'm like contradicting myself, but I have these Ray-Ban sunglasses for, I think I've had these for like five years and they're my most worn pair. They're the pair that I reach for the most out of any of my sunglasses. And when I was on a work trip in Italy, I saw one of my technical coworkers, um, abroad coworkers, I guess we'll call them. And she was wearing, I think they were just blue light glasses because she wasn't wearing them the whole time we were there, but she was wearing them like sporadically throughout. So I felt like they weren't real glasses. Um, but they were like kind of the same shape as this, where they're like a little bit rounder at the top and then they had the hex at the bottom and they were gold frame blue light glasses. And I was like, oh, I really need those. Like it, she was wearing like a Gucci sweater, which I obviously do not have, but just like the whole look and just being like a really nice like workwear look. I loved the glasses for that. And I wear my diff um, blue light glasses all the time because I'm always on my computer I'm always editing. Even if I'm just on my phone, I like to wear them just because it's like, why wouldn't I protect my eyes if I can? Um, so I saw them and I thought they were so cute. And I tried to look up like, I, I didn't know if they were Ray-Ban or not. I don't know what brand they are still. Um, I should have asked her, but I was like too shy because I was like this little American girl and everyone was Italian and dressed really cool. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know, I guess I was scared. Um, but yeah, so I looked up to see if they had like any generic brands, but a lot of them that I'm seeing are either like, octagonal so they're like very structured and it's like not the shape that I want or they're too big so I, they're like really oversized ones that I would just look ridiculous in because I have a very tiny head <laughs> so I mean I get the medium size in my Ray-Bans and when I saw that Ray-Ban had them I was like okay that's exactly what I want and I already know that the shape works because I have the sunglasses but like part of me is kind of like I don't know if I need to own like blue lights and sunglasses in the same shape like maybe I should change it up a little bit but obviously the other part of me is very practical and it's like, I know I'm gonna get the use out of them because I absolutely love these. So they're on my list. Again, they're I think 150. So it's kind of a crazy amount for blue light glasses, but because I wear them so much, I think I would be okay with owning them as long as I was gonna you know, take care of them, which I always do. I never have my sunglasses out of the case. And this chain is actually super helpful too because I'm like so anal about keeping my stuff like nice that when I take these off, I can just have them hang instead of them being in my shirt and like falling out if I bend over to get something. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was super random, but 
I can link the sunglasses chain for you guys too, even though it's not on my wish list because I already own it. Um, but yeah, that's the story with the Ray-Bans. Um, heavily thinking about those just because like once I see something that I really like, I heavily fixate on it, which is like not healthy, but <laughs> it's fine, who cares? Um, okay, moving on. I feel like this wouldn't be a wishlist video if I didn't talk to you guys about sneakers. And in my last wishlist video, I think I told you guys about the Nike Dunks and they were the black and white version. Actually, maybe they were these. I can't remember, but I'm gonna include them anyway because I literally am so obsessed with them. And I saw Rachel Radke got them and that's kind of like what reignited my desire to get the style shoe. But so I was originally looking at the Panda color combination. So they're black and white Dunks and I thought they were so cool. And because I wore so much wear currently, so much black and white that I was like, those would work perfectly into my wardrobe. But originally when I was looking at the style shoe, I saw the bone color and they're kind of like a creamy off-white color paired with like a really light gray. And even though there's gray like mixed into the tones and stuff, they're a very like warm toned shoe. And I think because we're moving into like the warmer months, I'm like thinking of getting that color combination instead. And I just think that they're like a little less, like I don't wanna use the word offensive, but like that's what I mean. There's so much contrast with the Panda ones that I feel like they're very like stark and in your face. Whereas like these are a little bit more understated and I'm a very like street style oriented type of girl, but the black and white ones I think are a little bit too street style for me. And I've been seeing them everywhere too. So I feel like I would have pulled the trigger on them because I'm like getting signs from everywhere, but I'm really like looking to get the bone color because I just think they're so pretty. And I feel like it's a little bit more of like a feminine touch on a very like masculine, like unisex shoe when it's in that like warm color palette. So yeah, I think those are gonna be my next like treat to myself, but I'm gonna link them from the GOAT website and basically what they are is like resale. So depending on your size, the price will be different. I think my size, I'm a seven and a half in women's and um, I think that's one of the most expensive pairs. And I'm like, great, of course. And I have like pretty, I'm a size nine. So I consider myself to have like pretty big feet and I'm like kind of confused as to why those are like the most expensive ones because I'm like, who else is walking around with like feet as big as mine? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think the price fluctuates sometimes. So I'll just keep like looking at it. But if I end up pulling the trigger after doing, you know, a couple more weeks of work, then maybe I will end up buying them. Um, but yeah, so those are definitely high on the list as well. And then the next one is a makeup product. And I told you guys about um, the, what is it called? Afterglow, I think, from the Sai brand. I literally can't say anything. I think it's Glow, so I don't know. Um, but I'm wearing it on my skin right now, and this is the only product that I have on, and then I have concealer on, but I've been wearing it nonstop down here because it has sunscreen in it. But when I went to buy that product, I was deciding between that and getting the Charlotte Tilbury foundation. And I'm like so late to the game on this, I know. And they even just came out with a really new one, which is their beautiful skin. I already have their light wonder foundation and I'm obsessed with it. But when I went to color match myself for like the regular, I think it's the Hollywood flawless filter. But when I went to color correct, color correct. When I went to color match, I was like, obsessed with it like the texture was so nice it wasn't too thick it had a little bit more coverage than my light wonder which i actually really liked but um yeah i just feel like that's just a product that i'm like i know i'm gonna get i'm just waiting because i just got stuff and i mean charlotte tilbury is just like amazing all around i've never ever heard any bad reviews about any of her products and i think that like speaks volumes because i think sometimes like with brands you can have like certain products that are like hero products and people's um and like staples and people's makeup routines but i've seen people who like only use charlotte tilbury it's like from start to finish only using her products and i feel like that's like the ultimate goal is to like have a line of products that like every single one is just like so hyped and so well loved and i feel like that's what charlotte tilbury is so yeah I'm definitely gonna get it. I'm just not getting it yet. So you guys will probably see. And maybe I'll do like an updated makeup routine once I have like that foundation because I have gotten like a couple new products and I wanna share all of them with you guys. But yeah, so, I mean, I feel like I just like expressed my full love for Charlotte Tilbury, but um, very warranted. So the next product is actually a home pro Well, I don't know if you're considering it as a home product, but I do. Um, but it's a candle from H&M and I've been seeing it on Chloe Rose's channel for like, honestly ever and 
What I love about this one is the like last container that it comes in. I'm sure it smells great. Everyone always raves about it. I've seen it on like multiple people's channels and on Instagram. And it's kind of like this tortoise kind of shape like within the glass. Obviously I'll put a picture in because I'm doing a horrible job describing this. Go ahead. How'd you know I was gone? I saw you in the background. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. You can dive, but don't dive deep. Okay, pause for one second because we have a guppy that would like to jump into the pool. <laughs> Go ahead, let's see the form. Bent legs. I'm gonna give that a seven. Um, but yeah, so I feel like because I'm a person that loves neutrals, like having a candle like that is just like a little bit something different and a little bit of contrast. Really? Sorry. <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, it's a little bit of contrast in something where like, you know, I'm the type of person that would probably want like an all white room at some point, but I don't wanna be boring. So yeah, I feel like it would be a good addition. And I've been burning candles nonstop in my room just because I love, I don't know. It's a nice little ambiance, but um, yeah, so that's a really random one. But then we're moving on to another swimsuit option. And I feel like this is another brand that's been like hyped up so much. And I think I've only had one person that I've seen who like reviewed this in a negative sense. And it was because she had broad shoulders, but they're the Hunza G swimsuit. And they're like, apparently they're this material that like you can wear them at any size and it's like one size fits all, but like pregnant people wear them. So like you can have a literal like nine month pregnant belly and still wear these swimsuits. So I feel like, I mean, I just kind of want to get one and try it on and see how that's possible. Um, but I also have broad shoulders. So I kind of like, I don't know. I feel like if someone with broad shoulders is saying that they don't like the shape because their shoulders are broad, then I might have an issue with it too. Um, but they're also kind of expensive. So, I mean, it's good that you'll be able to like wear it in all like stages of your life. Um, but yeah, I think I would go for the black one though. Black or white, because I feel like obviously it's me. No one's gonna be surprised by that. The next thing that I am lusting after is a hair product. <laughs> and I actually just did a vlog and shared like my really cheap um, recommendation for a heat protectant spray. It's literally like $7 from Target. And I was like, yeah, I really wanted the Moroccan oil one, but I have this one and it works really well. And then I came down here and my mom has her hair products here and she was like, there's everything in the closet. Like you could use whatever you want. And she has the Moroccan oil heat protecting spray and I used it and it smells so good. And I feel like it worked really well. And now I'm like, I kind of want to get it, but I just don't, I don't know. I don't feel the need to like spend a lot of money on hair products because I feel like I don't have like any issues with that. I feel like if I was someone who had like, well, my hair is probably dead right now because I haven't gotten it cut in a disgusting amount of months, but if I had like, you know, stringy ends, I'm sure I'd like invest in Olaplex like shampoo and conditioner or something like that. But I could literally use like drugstore shampoo if I wanted to, I just don't. Cause I know it's like bad for your hair and literally probably leaves like a coating on it. But yeah, um, being down here and using that product, I'm like, I think I need it. I hate using the word need when I talk about my hair, but I feel like it's important. Anyway, okay, staying on the beauty stuff. I don't know if that's considered beauty, but um, the Elemis Cleansing Balm. First of all, I've never used a balm before, so maybe I should try like a cheaper one before I like jump into this one. But this is one all my British um, YouTubers that I subscribe to like all use this stuff and they've all worked with Elemis. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm falling into like the PR trap or like the marketing trap of like these people influencing me, but um, I love the idea of a cleansing balm. The only thing is that normally when I wash my face, I have like no problem getting my makeup off. And I know that this is supposed to be like a step before cleansing. And I feel like I don't really need it, but at the same time, I like kind of want to see what the hype is about. So I think it's just like my curiosity and like, I don't know. I feel like there's nothing wrong with like getting an extra step of cleansing, especially since my skin is like very blocked lately. And so I wash my makeup brushes and then maybe I'll add this step into my routine and that'll help a little bit more. Not that I wear face makeup during the week or anything like that, but I feel like when I do, my skin doesn't really like it. And that's more so like why I wear like tinted moisturizers and stuff. Cause I feel like, well, I don't really like the look of foundation cause I feel like it looks creepy no matter how much you put it on. Seriously, are you looking for some attention? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so I feel like that would be a good product to add into my routine and I will test it like any of this stuff as I get it you'll see in my vlogs because I show you guys literally everything about my life <laughs> um and then the last one I kept this to the last because it's kind of um it's 
it's been on my mind for a while, but I know that I definitely don't need it, which I guess that's the whole point of a wish list is like you put down all the stuff you want and then you only end up getting the stuff that you actually like think that you need. Well, that's like the goal anyway, because I don't want to just like go out and buy every single thing that I want because I don't know. I feel like we have to deprive ourselves in some way. Otherwise, it's not exciting anymore. Um, but there is a card holder and it is Gucci and it has a bee on it. And I'm like obsessed with bees. I don't know why. And then I heard they went extinct and I have like a very, I don't know. I'm very empathetic toward that. <laughs> They're not extinct. Bees are on the extinction list. Endangered. Endangered. What did I say? You said they went extinct. They didn't go extinct, I lied. Um, they're on the endangered species list. <laughs> and I feel like it's because everyone's afraid of them, so they're always killing them. But I don't know, it could also be the ecosystem. I don't know much about it, but I know that they're extinct and that has nothing no, to do with- No, they're not extinct. I mean, what is it? Endangered. endangered. Okay, they both start with an E. They're all over the place. Okay. Anyway, they're endangered. <laughs> and yeah, so this card holder has a B on it and if I were to get any tattoo, I've said this before too, but if I were to get a tattoo, it would be a bee. But I have like no connection to bees at all and it like literally would mean nothing. So I wouldn't get that permanently on my body. And besides the fact that I would never get a tattoo. So that's relevant, but this card holder has a bee on it. And I think it's technically a men's wallet, but I saw it in the store, like probably when I started working at my company and I was like, oh, okay, I'll get that next. And then I just haven't bought anything in like two years from the stores, which is kind of crazy. But I mean, it's not that crazy because I live in the city now and I have to pay for rent. So I can't be like dropping money on all these bags and stuff. Um, but yeah, so it, it's like something again that I would use every single day and maybe I'll get it. Like, I mean, I don't plan on leaving my company anytime soon, but I feel like that would be my exiting gift to myself if I ever did, because it's like a reward for being, you know, at a company for, almost four years. Um, but yeah, so that's the whole wish list. Wrote it on my nice little pad here. And yeah, I hope this gave you guys some ideas of things to add into your wardrobes, or if you're just having like the spending itch, like I know a lot of people get, I get it all the time and I try not to give into it, but sometimes you just have to. Um, but yeah, this is like my personality in a list of all the stuff that I want to add into my wardrobe. and in my home and all that kind of stuff. So why are you staring at me like that? I thought you were almost done. I am. So I hope you guys enjoy this concept. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you did so I can keep doing this probably every month. That's like the goal. But because I'm putting out so many videos, I kind of like put it to the back burner and forget. But I mean, this is good for me to like get all my ideas out. And if I ever, you know, get the spending itch, I can always go back and watch my own videos, which I feel like is kind of a loser thing to do, but <laughs> it's definitely helpful. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you on my next video.